You know, there's one thing that most people who, like myself, carry a 357 Magnum for self-defense worry about. And no, it's not whether we took our prostate medication this morning. It actually has nothing to do with our age. It has to do with our hearing. We worry about losing hearing because of damage done while firing such a loud round in self-defense. Because a 357 Magnum can damage your hearing. I actually ruptured one of my eardrums not too long ago firing a 357 Magnum with no hearing protection on at an indoor range. Well, because of that, we often worry, oh my gosh, if I have to use my gun, am I going to lose hearing permanently? Well, you might. Now, people usually say two things about this. One, they usually say, well, it's really bad to carry such a loud caliber because once you fire your first round, you're going to be deaf, you're going to be all discombobulated or discombobulated or whatever you want to say. But that's not really true because there's a thing called auditory exclusion. Now, this thing called auditory exclusion is basically where your brain shuts down your hearing. But it seems a lot of people are thinking that will protect their hearing. It does not protect your hearing. It will protect you from being affected in that moment on how you handle yourself, but it does not protect your hearing. And that's the main point I want to make today. Uh, the point that you won't really be that shaken by the sound is not my main point. That's true, so I wouldn't worry about being deafened by the first round if you're actually using your gun in self-defense, but that risk of long-term hearing damage is still there because auditory exclusion is not a hardware issue, it's a software issue. It's not physiological, it's psychological. Your ears don't close up or anything. Your brain just stops responding to stimuli from your ears. It stops listening, basically. It says, you know, right now we've identified a threat and vision and hand-eye coordination is far more important than hearing at this moment, so we're going to shut down the hearing. But the damage is still being done. Like I said, it's a software issue, not a hardware issue. So if you fire your gun, if it's loud enough to rupture your eardrums, it's still going to do it. You may not notice it right then and there, like you would if you were just shooting at the range, because at the range you're not really uh, under any duress, so you feel it right away, the, the pain and the ringing. You're going to not feel that. But, like I said, auditory exclusion does not protect you from damage. You could still damage your eardrum, and the long-term effect will still be there. You'll just notice it later. So... That's the two things I kind of wanted to cover. I wanted to cover one, don't really worry about if you're actually in a high stress situation and you're defending yourself because you're probably not even going to hear your gun. I know that I didn't when I was in that situation, but don't think it's going to protect your actual eardrums and protect your hearing because it will not. Like I said, it is not a physical thing. It is a psychological thing. So keep that in mind. If you're going to carry a really loud caliber, don't count on auditory exclusion to prevent you from having tinnitus or long-term hearing loss because it won't. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are very confused about that fact, so I just wanted to make it really clear. It will not protect you from any hearing damage. But I think most of us would agree that if you do have to defend yourself with your gun, you're going to want the most capable rounds you can have, which 357 Magnum is definitely one of those rounds. And if you do suffer a little long-term hearing loss, a little ear ringing, well, it's a whole lot better than being dead.